Hi, I'm Jay. Hello, I'm Ita. Hi, I'm Melissa. And these are some of our favorite books from the 2022 summer reading lists. All kaiju are born with a superpower to strike fear in the hearts of their city, but Ansu's power is flowers. His family gives him tips on wreaking havoc and mayhem, but Ansu is more suited to spreading happiness and delight. Will Ansu make his family proud? Find out in Ansu the Great Kaiju by Benson Shum. Lift by Min Lee. Iris lives with her parents and her younger brother in an apartment building, which has, of course, a lift, an elevator, and who doesn't want to be the one to push the buttons? It makes her happy. This is Iris's job. Until one day, it isn't. A little magic helps, as does the realization that sometimes we all need a little lift, and some things are better when they are shared. The illustrations are laid out in a graphic style, with fabulous two-page spreads when Irish, Iris's imagination takes flight. Min Lee tells the story from Iris's point of view, and Dan Santat's drawings capture all of the feelings expressed by Iris and the other characters in this book. The biggest mistake Poco's parents ever made was giving her a drum. But this was not an isolated error in judgment by Poco's parents. Unable to handle the noise, her father persuades her to head outside, where soon Poco has created an entire forest band in a boisterous musical parade. Poco is a heroine who literally marches to her own beat, takes risks, and follows her heart. A bit of tension, a bit of humor, and lots of fun make Poco and the Drum the perfect summer read. Do you like reading true stories about real people? You'll find what you're looking for in the Little People Big Dreams series by Maria Isabel Sanchez Vegara. These picture book biographies will introduce you to a variety of inspiring people and their achievements, from the likes of teenage climate activist Greta Thunberg to Brazilian soccer star Pele. Each book is illustrated by a different artist from around the world, and I think it's really fun to see the assortment of visual styles, too. What I Am by Divya Srinivasan What are the things that make you, you? What I Am is one girl's answer to the question, rudely asked, what are you? Who she is, is human, a sister, a daughter, brave, scared, sometimes mean and sometimes generous, and many other things. With humor and spirit, this girl, this human, details who she is, and that is not a what. The illustrations are made with pencil and watercolor and are bright and clear with lots of white space. The humor shows in every drawing. On the page where our character is brave, we can see her very afraid mother in the corner. This story is based on the real experiences of the author's life. The author tells us that story in a note at the end of the book. Join Ty in his imaginative adventures. Ty wants to play, but his family is too busy, but he knows just what to do. With the power of his imagination, soon his whole family is in on the fun. Ty's Travels by Kelly Starling Lyons is the perfect series for emerging readers looking for basic language and word repetition, but in an engaging and fun story with lovable characters that highlights the power of play and imagination. Yasmin is a curious and energetic second grader who loves to try new things. In The Explorer, she turns a trip to the farmer's market into an adventure and makes a map of her neighborhood that comes in handy when she gets separated from her mom. In The Librarian, Yasmin tries her hand at my job when she gets to be library helper for the day in school. If you want to read about these and other adventures, look for the Yasmin series by Sadia Faruqi. Don't Throw It to Mo is one in the series by David Adler. Mo Jackson loves sports. He is the smallest and youngest on the football team. Can he help his team win the game? He spends a lot of time on the bench with coach. At last, he gets his chance. On the field, he follows the coach's plans and plays hard, but the coach tells the team, don't throw to Mo. How can he help his team win the game? Will his team win the game? With cartoonish illustrations, this book is funny and engaging, and there are others in this award-winning series, too. Meet Krabby. He's, well, Krabby. His friends try to cheer him up in a variety of ways, but Krabby is just happy being Krabby. The Krabby books are short, silly graphic novels that are done in short story format and are perfect for early readers. If you like silly stories that make you laugh, 
You'll enjoy the Krabby series by Jonathan Fensky. We love our pet cats and dogs, but some animals have bad reputations. A lot of people are afraid of bats because of their association with vampires, but they're not dangerous. They're the only mammals that can fly, and they help us by eating insects like mosquitoes, which, as far as I'm concerned, don't have any redeeming qualities. If you're interested in learning about some frequently maligned animals and you love silly cartoony illustrations like me, check out the Disgusting Critters series by Elise Gravel. Summertime Sleepers by Melissa Stewart. We all know animals that hibernate in winter. Bears and chipmunks, groundhogs and snakes. But summertime sleepers? Yes, there are animals that estivate. That is, sleep in the summertime. Each two-page spread details a different animal in various parts of the world. Some sleep in groups, some alone, some sleep all summer, and some doze on days that are too hot or there is too little food available. A black and white sketch shows each animal and gives its size and proper name in English and Latin and where it can be found. The main picture shows its habitat, that is, where it lives, and tells us why it is sleeping. Here, the leopard gecko in Pakistan sleeps inside a cozy den and gets its energy from its tail. At the end of the book, and here you can see the sketch, and at the end of the book, there are notes about each animal from the author and the illustrator. This is an interesting book for scientists and for animal lovers. Jennifer Keelan was born with cerebral palsy and was not able to attend school as a child because there was no entrance accessible for her wheelchair. Many places she wanted to go were not accessible to her due to her physical barriers to her wheelchair. When she was eight, a new law was proposed, the Americans with Disabilities Act, or the ADA, which insisted that schools, governments, and businesses become accessible for all people. When the law stalled in Congress, disability activists took action. Despite adults telling her she was too young and she couldn't do it, Jennifer joined the Capitol Crawl protest where wheelchair users crawled, dragged, and heaved themselves up the hundred steps to the Capitol, crawling to represent children with disabilities. Learn about one young girl's fight to improve the lives of people with disabilities and all the way to the top. How one young girl's fight for Americans with disabilities changed everything.